Today, the whole purpose of the, uh, the meeting is to talk about strategic networking conversations, a conversation that's going to help you get to, your, get to your goal. And I define it as just simply thinking about the desired result of your conversation before the conversation happens. Identifying goals up front. So when you come to a networking event, what's your goal? Like you guys came here today, what, what was your purpose of coming? OK. Get leads. And, yes, and vice versa. Right, yep, and to give leads, to get and give leads. OK. What about, let's say you went to Starbucks. Guy behind you starts talking to you while you're waiting in line, first thing in the morning. What's your goal in talking to that person? Do you ever think about having a goal in talking to that person? I use that one specifically because there's a million memes out there that, you know, please don't talk to me until I've got my coffee first thing in the morning, you know, insert coffee, then the machine works kind of thing. But think about, you know, what's your goal in talking to people just in casual conversations and even talking to friends and coworkers and, and family. Do you have your objectives in mind as you're having those conversations, right? And why is this important? Well, let's say hypothetically, you're in a conversation at a networking group and somebody walks up to you and, you know, hey, what brings you here? And like, well, I was in the mortgage industry and you know the mortgage industry and what's happened over the last few years. I mean, it's just been a nightmare. The company that I work for, it was a mess and just complain, 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 blaming, just, ugh, okay. And you go on and it's like, well, you know, have you tried this? Ah, oh, that's not going to work because of this. Like, well, what about now? Nah, I can't do that because that, these, these companies, they won't look at people like that. And they've got an answer for everything you suggest, right? Mm, okay, toxic. All right, I'll walk away. You know, and hopefully you don't, oh, yeah, I know what you mean because I just came from, right? You want to try to get out of those conversations if you can. So you successfully withdraw. Let's say you have another conversation, your very next conversation. Guy says, oh, you know, I'm actually, I'm working in the mobile applications industry right now where we're developing different apps and things and you're going to run to people who are working like Jason who's actually looking to hire and so the main problem we're having right now is just the physical growth you know we get into a new city you know with with what we have we can't really just lease space we got to actually buy space I mean it's just trying to find somebody who has mortgage industry experience that is willing to utilize that I mean do, do you know anybody like that uh, nope I sure don't, right? You know, or worse, you say, you know what, actually I do. I just met that guy over there, and but don't talk to him because let me tell you about this guy. He did this and this and this, right? And then whatever it is you do, he goes to another conversation. Do you happen to know anybody who does those things? Nope, I sure don't, right? And, and you're missing out on those conversations, right? Doors are, are closing all over the place. And hopefully this is obvious, but I like to at least throw the, the example out there of, you know, if I referred a, a plumber to you and I said, you know, hey, this guy's great, bless you, uh, you know, good prices, does a good job, here you go, call this guy, and he sets up a nice window for you, 11 to 1, that's a good time frame, I can still get back to work, he ends up showing up at 4.30, he's rude to your kids, tra charges you twice as much, and, and doesn't fix the problem. Is that my fault? Yep, it sure is, because I gave that to you. And then if I say, hey, I know a good roofer, thanks right you know and, and could I have prevented that ahead of time absolutely so I'm, I'm taking note of his attitude is he following through on little promises that he makes to me is he you know reliable how does he treat other people in social situations who you know can't help him in return if that makes sense you know how does he treat people who can't help him you know is he complaining about life you know life is hard for everybody you know it's it's uh, you choose to talk about those things or, or not. So paying attention to those things dictates whether you're going to refer them. So I want to take you through some strategic conversations that might help you in how you're talking about the job search and that might get the, the responses that you're looking for. Other point I want to just quick make on there is if you know people that are constantly being introduced to the right people and opportunities tend to fall in their laps, somebody is introducing them. Right? Why are they being introduced? Right? There are doors all around us, and the, the complaints and the conversations that we have are either opening those doors for us or they're closing doors that we didn't even know existed. Hypothetical situation. Somebody says, hey, how the, how's the search going? Right? You've got multiple options on how you can respond to this. 
One being, and you have to, I'm, as I'm looking at this, this is a little texty for a PowerPoint, but uh, you know, how's the search going? You know, this is absolutely ridiculous. I had three interviews just last week, three rejections. It was, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, the one day, Monday, if you remember Monday, it was, it was raining like crazy. The traffic was horrendous. Nobody was allowed to drive in the rain around here and the construction. I was, even with all that, I got there reasonably on time. I was three minutes late, three minutes. Didn't get the job. The next one, got there especially early just to make sure, you know, and then I'm, so I'm sitting there that extra time. They show up late, so I'm sitting there an extra 15 minutes, and then they kept me for three hours, and then they pass on me because I didn't have a degree. Like, really? You could see that on my resume. Come on. And the last one was the worst of all of them because they passed on me because I, I didn't have skills that they never asked me about. Right? They, they need somebody who's got Office 365. I've got that. They didn't even ask a single question on it, and they're saying that's why they're passing. So, I mean, this job market, this is ridiculous. Okay, let's think about that particular scenario. And uh, you've, if you've been to more than one of these events at different job clubs, you've had this conversation with somebody, I promise. So, I want you to start thinking about every conversation you have. What's the reaction to that? Somebody says that to you. How do you react? Realistically, polite conversation, how do you react to that person? Okay. But right, so between us, that person's not sitting here, you're probably gonna say, oh, I'm so sorry, right? If you hear somebody say to you, oh, I'm so sorry, that sounds horrible, you are complaining, right? That's your, that's your tell to yourself. Pay attention if people are, are, are feeling empathy for you or, or sympathy for you to pay attention to that. The implication of those comments that you've just made, this is a really bitter person Eek. toxic. What's the result? I'm not referring this person anywhere. All right, so the results of this, they're taking pity on you, not empathy. You gotta be a better person and you're not getting referrals and the only people who will continue talking with you are those people who want to commiserate. Those are not the people you need on your side, right? And I hope I'm not calling anyone out from prior conversations, not the, that's not the intent. So I'm gonna give you the exact same Situation, same guy, just went through those exact same interviews. So how's the search going? Actually, you know, it's pretty active. Uh, I had three different companies bring me in for interviews last week. Uh, I still haven't found the exact, you know, the right spot, but right now for me, I'm, it, it's most important for me to, to find something where I can, I know I can be there long term and, and really have an impact for the company. So uh, I'm hoping, you know, something turns up soon. Same situation went through those same things, got passed for the exact same reasons. But again, what's the reaction to that? You know, wow, okay, now we're starting to ask questions. What are you looking for? What kind of a position would you want to be at long term? Now this person's interested, they're asking questions about what you're looking for. The implication, this person must be good because there's lots of companies bringing them in. Right? Something was done right there to get those interviews. And the result is, I would look great for referring this person to other people. I need to find some leads for that person, right? Same situation, but now you're getting questions and offers to help. You're, you're throwing out their positive character references and char character traits about yourself. Remember, what you say about other people says more about you than it says about those other people, right? So as you talk positively or negatively about people, that has a reflection on you. Um, and you've just created an active referral source. Do you think that's a result of luck that you're now getting those referrals? Not so much. Another example, let's say that, uh, um, let's say you got an interview tomorrow, right? It's coming up, it's a big one, you're excited about this interview and it's a position, it's Navistar, you wanna get in there and uh, impress the person that you're gonna be meeting with and that night you just, you can't sleep. Right? You're up all night and you're laying there and you just can't get out and you're starting to get stressed because you're not getting sleep. And then you look over and, oh, it's time to get up. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go to Starbucks. I'm going to go get that coffee. Right? Now you're standing in line, the guy behind you, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Right? And you're just thinking, oh, oh seriously? Just not now. All right? I got a big day. Stop right and just shut that person down throw some anger their direction this guy's like hey what really what's going on kind of a thing he leaves 
Okay, put that negative situation out of your head, go home, your coffee's making you feel better, you're studying, you're enthusiastic, you're ready, you walk into your interview, you're like, all right, I'm ready to go, I'm all excited, and here comes the hiring manager. I have had that happen, I can't even tell you how many dozens of times. I could spend an entire meeting, a full meeting at another job club, like hours of times of, of my candidate pulls in the parking lot, there's one spot left, there's two cars, my guy whips in the spot and salutes that person as he goes. Guess who the hiring manager is? I, I mean, I've had I literally dozens of the person who's tailing my guy a little bit too close and gives him a little salute out the back because he's tailing a little close. Guess who the hiring manager is? Um, on the other side, I did have a situation that was downtown. Guys walk into the position, get there like 15 minutes early. By the way, 15 minutes, not a half an hour, 45 minutes. You know, you got a busy day, guy shows up 45 minutes early. Ugh, he's here already? You're feeling rushed? Right, yeah, just long frame of mind, right? Um, but the guy's like 15 minutes early, as he should be, downtown, hustle and bustle of downtown. A woman's walking across the street, you know, tons of papers and stuff, and somebody bumps her shoulder, keeps going. Her papers are everywhere in the middle of Washington Avenue, downtown. My guy, Checks his watch, goes over, helps her get her stuff. Hey, you know, good luck, no problem, have a good day. Walks a couple blocks down, up to the 37th floor, goes to his interview, in walks the hiring manager, there she is. No interview, 10 minutes later, he's got the job. Because of what he did on the street, right? That stuff really matters. We're right close to the end here. Um, any questions about any of this or conversations that you have, uh, questions about or that I can answer for you? All right, thanks so much. All right. That's for me, Melanie. Hmm? So she and I were talking before she went into her interview, and I'm sorry, right after she got it. Okay. So I looked up the guy she interviewed with, since I'm two rows behind me. Never met the guy before. Okay. Somebody on my team that same day came up to me with a problem I had to go to talk to him about. I'm like, let's see if I can squeeze Melanie into the conversation. Yeah. That worked out. Nice. Yeah. Right. Of course. And the reason I did it, going back to what your concept here is, the reason I did it is how many times I saw her help you everybody else in the job. Yes, her attitude here. I have no clue what her skill sets are. Okay. Couldn't speak to her, you know, ability to show up on time, right? Yeah. Personality-wise, your desire to help other people. Fascinating. And I so hope that I can amplify that sound loud enough. <laughs>